Hey guys, what's up? Welcome back to the channel. This is Bucket Ponds, and my name is Terry. I seek to enlighten, entertain, and encourage you to start your own projects. Today we're looking at part two for the detritus worm culture. I will have a link to the previous video, the build video, in the description, and uh, I think you'll enjoy it. All right, guys, uh, so to start with, I am recording my voiceover in a special booth now, and it should increase our audio quality a bit. Uh, but here we are. We're looking at the detritus worm culture. Uh, this is a few days after the build video, and uh, yeah, we can see quite a bit of activity in here. If you look closely, you will see occasional worms coming by. Uh, but I do notice that we have a billion paramecium in here. And in my experience, they seem to uh, be exclusive. You know, it seems like if I have tons of paramecium that I don't have so many detritus worms. And I don't know if they're like linked in some way or if maybe they compete for the same food. I'm not sure how that works exactly, but I have noticed that they appear to uh, exclude one another. So that might be something of concern. Uh, but you can see our cucumber slice here. It's being eaten away by the pets inside. And for a little background, this is a two and a half gallon aquarium planted with duckweed and uh, Nutella macroalgae, seeded with uh, samples from all of my various projects that contain detritus worms. And of course, uh, I've brought over some bladder snails and some other pets as well. The bladder snails, they seem to encourage the worms uh, in one way or another. Uh, but the tank is thriving. It's doing really well. I am experimenting with a 24-hour light on this tank to see how that might affect the worms. Uh, they shouldn't react at all, but I could be wrong, so we might have to adjust some things in the future. But we have tons of snails in here. Lots of activity. This is starting to resemble my original detritus worm culture, and that's exactly what I wanted. The high uh, levels of snail activity, the, the high population of bladder snails, definitely seems to coincide with a strong detritus worm culture. So now we're, we're just looking around the tank, and we're looking up here at the surface, and uh, there's our snails, of course. And if you look closely, I'm sure you'll see our paramecium and some uh, planaria and some other creatures as well. Uh, this is not a, a monoculture, this is a community culture, I think is a good word for it. It's uh, basically a pond in an aquarium, a simulated mini pond, if you will. And it comes complete with all of our little pets. Now, for a little background on these worms, they are in every aquarium. <laughs> if you have plants in your tank, even if you don't have any plants, odds are you have detritus worms. And uh, they're not exactly hard to raise accidentally, uh, but when trying to raise them on purpose, in the numbers that the thousands and thousands that you've seen in my previous videos, then yes, it becomes a, a bit of a skill uh, to acquire. If you look closely there, you can see uh, it might be a planarian or it might be one of our detritus worms. It's kind of hard to tell. Uh, small planaria, they seem to move a bit like our worms, but they stick to the glass. Our beloved uh, little white detritus worms, they free swim. They, they swim throughout the water. So, uh, that's a, a one way to differentiate them. Also, the planaria tend to be a bit larger. Uh, but as it is, this tank is healthy. The water quality looks good. The pets inside are very active. And uh, I think we're well on our way to starting a nice detritus worm culture. There's that. Yeah, I'm pretty sure that's a planarian just cruising around there. Uh, they are pretty interesting creatures in their own right. They are flatworms, and uh, they have some useful, uh, interesting abilities. All right, so I decided to wait another day, come back out, and resume filming on this tank. And if you look closely up here near the surface, you will see some of our detritus worms. Yes, uh, they're very small at the moment, and they don't get much bigger than they, uh, they are seen here. Of course, I'm not seeing very many right now. Uh, but if you look very closely, there they are. You'll see our paramecium, which are the uh, little football white creatures there darting around. And among them, you will see a few longer swimming creatures. Those are our detritus worms. R, R, R. <laughs> Those are the detritus worms in our aquarium. And I'm very happy to see that. So yes, we have succeeded. We have started the culture. They are few and far between at the moment, but they're here. They're swimming around in search of that cucumber slice, no doubt. 
Now, I'm not quite sure what they eat. Uh, forgive me while I move the camera around a little bit. Uh, but I know for a fact that they will consume, you know, the cucumber slices. Now, I don't know if they're eating the cucumber directly or if they're eating bacteria that grows on the cucumber. It's very hard to say. But, uh, you know, we've learned from experience that they will eat fresh foods like cucumber slices. And, uh, of course, we have tons of paramecium in here. There are quite a few planaria up there as well as some ostracods and some baby bladder snails. And uh, I wouldn't be surprised to see some limpet snails in here eventually as well. Uh, but overall, this culture is starting to uh, to look pretty nice. It's very dense with life. And that shows me that the uh, oxygen in the water is pretty high. The uh, number of uh, species in here is pretty high as well. So I think we've started a nice ecosystem. And it's based entirely on cucumber slices. That's the, the power that we input into the system. There's a large planaria cruising by. And some uh, ostracods buzzing around. But overall, this tank looks pretty good. And I'm happy with it. I see our worms inside. Hopefully, they'll start breeding and dividing very soon. And we'll have a, a very strong population of them with uh, any time now. Within any time now. Uh, you'll have to forgive me. It's very hot out here in my recording booth. And I am sweating up a storm. <laughs> it's it's kind of crazy, but, you know, I got to struggle. <laughs> I struggle to create these videos and to succeed. I want to uh, share with you guys, and I want to want to grow as a channel. You know, I want stuff to, to improve. I want us to do better. So I am working. I am listening to your comments and questions. and uh, But, yeah, I'm pretty happy with this tank. We have quite a bit of life in here. There's lots of action, and uh, the planaria themselves are are pretty interesting too, but there's a better look at our detritus worms. We have quite a few in here. They are swimming throughout the water column, and that makes me very, very happy. We're well on our way, you guys. So if you're building something like this around, you know, at home, watching these videos, looking for tips and, and tricks and suggestions, then I hope that I'm helping you. Um, I'm using slightly hard water. I'm feeding them cucumber slices. And uh, I am attempting to uh, try a 24-hour light on the tank here, which may or may not be a good idea. I want to stimulate the algae growth a bit to uh, have some more food for our creatures in the aquarium. But overall, I'm pretty happy with this, and I'm pretty excited. Yeah. The paramecium, they're not such a big deal to me. I have just the ability to create millions of them at will, so they're not too exciting at this point. Uh, but the worms are the main focus. And here's a look at the aquarium zoomed out. Uh, when you feed uh, your detritus worms with uh, cucumber slices, I suggest that you kind of, uh, you know, submerge them within the water a bit. Try to pin them under some rocks or, you know, under your algae or whatever you have growing inside. And, uh, yeah, you know, there is some darkness down here and that's fine. The worms, if they prefer darkness, I'm hoping that they'll burrow as needed. Dig down into that mulm layer. If you remember from the first video, we actually added mulm from established aquariums. And, uh, you know, they are sludge worms, to be honest. They are detritus worms. So that mulm layer is very useful and very important for them to maintain their health and uh, their way of life. Well, all right, guys. Uh, there's our layers, our stratification in the tank. It's looking pretty good. It's very hot out here in my recording booth, so I'm going to go ahead and cut to the outro. The worms have started their culture, it's starting to expand, and I'm very happy to share that with you. Well, all right, that was part two for the detritus worm how-to culture. I hope that you enjoyed the video. Our worms are starting to multiply, and we're well on our way to uh, vast numbers, as seen in my previous videos. I do want to make a uh, I do want to note that um, it's been a while since I've really raised these worms by themselves, so we might have some difficulties, but we'll hope for the best. So thanks for watching, guys. I'll have another video up very soon. And uh, please remember to like and subscribe. I know I say it all the time, <laughs> but it really helps me out. And I appreciate it.